All right. Excuse me. All right. Square roots. Is our next topic is, and uh, I don't know if you've covered this in elementary school, but square roots are uh, well. They have something to do with these numbers here. These special numbers here, which you should also copy down, are um, well, they're kind of an elite group. You might say that they are a perfect group. These are what are called the perfect squares. Only these numbers, and I've only just given you the first 12, there is, it goes up higher and higher and higher, but only these numbers are considered to be perfect squares. Why is that? Well, when you take each of these numbers and you have, let's say, a square of each of those numbers, you can make a square. What do I mean by that? Remember, a square has all four sides the same. I have one square. One is a perfect square. One square allows me to make a square. Does two. Well, no matter how I arrange two squares, this is not a perfect square. Because remember, all the sides have to be the same in a square. Here I have two this way, one that way. That's not going to work. If I arrange the squares this way, that's not going to work either. So two is not considered to be a, a perfect square. Neither is three. What about four? Well, if they go like this, two there and two there, each side is two square lengths, so this is a perfect square. Four belongs to the perfect square category. Five would not. I couldn't arrange five squares to make a shape that has all the sides the same. Nine does. Can you guess how many sides, how many squares on each side? Three by three. And so on and so on and so forth. Even 144, if I had a lot of time, would make a perfect square. Even the number 10, you think, what's more perfect than 10? 10. 10 would not, 10 squares would not come together to make a perfect square. Let's take a look at 16 here. They're on uh, the square. I know it's kind of messy. It's not technically a square, but you get the idea. What we can say about 16, and for 9, and for 4, and for 1, and all these other perfect squares, is that the square of these numbers has a root to it, a base to it. The base to 16 is that you have this side which is 4, and that side which is 4. So we can say the root of this overall square is 4. What would the root of this square be? 3 by 3. So the square root of 9 would be 3. What about 4? It would be 2. The square root of 4 is 2. And 1 is 1. That's one way to think of it. Another way to think of it is where perfect squares are numbers that when multiplied by another whole, whole number times itself gives you that number. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8, 12 times 12, on and on and on it goes. Again, 10 is not a perfect square because no, no number no whole number times itself will give you 10. 5 plus 5 gives you 10, yes, but that's not times. It has to multiply to give you 10, and no number or whole number does. So these are your perfect squares. And each perfect square has its own little square root. To figure out the square root, you can draw the square thing, or you can just figure out what number times itself gives you the number. 
the symbol for square root is this. It's almost like a divided by sign. So you could say that you would say that this is the square root of 16. It is 4. Because 4 times 4 is 16. What would the answers to these three questions be? The square root of 36. Again, two ways to do it. You could draw your 36 squares and figure out what shape works best to make it a perfect square and figure out what each length of each side is. Or you can figure out, okay, which two whole numbers, when multiplied, give me 36? 6 times 6. So the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 81 is 9. And if you want, you can use this as kind of like a number line. That's 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8, 9 times 9, 10 times 10, 11, 12. So you can go along the way and figure out what the square roots are using that little line there or just using common sense. Okay? So that, those are what perfect squares are. That's what number multiplied itself gives you the perfect square number. Now sometimes you're asked to find square roots of numbers that are not perfect squares, like 30. 30 is not a perfect square. But how would you find its square root without using a calculator? Well, you're going to have to estimate. Here's how you do that. 30. 30 is not amongst our li list of perfect squares. But if it were, where would it be? It would be in between 25 and 36. Now, is it exactly in between 25 and 36? No, it's a little bit more to the word 25. What's the square root of 25? 5. What's the square root of 36? 6. If it was smack dab in between these two, the square root of 30 would probably be, well, right in the middle, 5.5. But it's not. It's just a little bit on this side. So you might want to say the square root of 30 is probably 5.4. Now since you're guessing, you're estimating, we can say that this is not equal to, it's approximately 5.4. Same thing with the square root of 10. If you look up here, where would 10 fit on our list of perfect squares? Well, 10 is right here, just after 9. Well, 9 square root is 3, 16 is 4. It's not in the middle, which would be 3.5. It's just a little bit after 9, which is the square root of 3. So I'd say it's about 3.1. And so you can estimate and say that the square root of 10 is 3.1. 15. Look at 15, it's right here. It's just before 16, so it's not quite 4, it would be 3.9. About 3.9. So that's estimating square roots. You can do that as well without a calculator. Now, here's some little square root tricks the square root of 2 squared. What again is the opposite of the squaring a number? Well, it is square rooting a number. If you take the square root of 2 and you times it by itself, what do you think you're going to get? You're going to get 2 again. Might be a little difficult to see, but just realize back here, if you had Four multiplied by four, four squared, you'll get sixteen. When you get sixteen and take the square root of it, you get four. So basically, the square root and squaring a number are exactly the same. They're opposites of each, they're opposites of each other. Sorry. So if you are given this, the square root of two squared, 
you actually get that same number again. It's just like if you took 5 and you multiplied it by 5, and you do the opposite, divide it by 5, you get the exact same 5 again. So for this, the answer would be square root of 7 times square root of 7. That's the same thing as saying the square root of 7 squared. Well, you get that plain old 7 again. Square root of 25 minus 16. Two what's inside the brackets here first, or do what's inside the square root here first. 25 minus 16 is 9. Don't forget the square root. So you're left with the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, now here, the square root of 900. Take a guess at this. Now 900 is not on the list up here. Now you can keep going and make the list, and you can probably get somewhere around 900 or above. Let's use common sense. 900 is not here, but 9 is here. And we know the square root of 9 is 3. If the square root of 9 is 3, what do you think the square root of 900 is? Well, it shouldn't take long for you to figure out that it's not just 3, it would be 30. And if you want to double check, you can always figure out what is 30 times 30 and you would get 900. For this one here, 0 0.49. I get the square root of 0 0.49. Well, let's take a look at our list of square roots. There's 49. The square root of 49 is 7. If the square root of 49 is 7, what do you think the square root of 0 0.49 is? Well, it's probably 0 0.7, and it is. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, how can that be? How can you get a bigger number? Well, it's a little decimal trick that I'll show you a bit later on, but yes, um, when you're multiplying de by decimals, you actually get smaller numbers. When you're dividing by decimals, you get bigger numbers. Anyways, here's your skill testing questions I'd like you to try. Show them with the notes all done. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.